Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Overflowing rivers inundate hundreds of villages in northern India. Pakistan's forex reserves dropped to lowest in three years. Nepal's PM Deoba sacks four ministers representing Janata Samajwadi Party. And now for all the details. Overflowing rivers in India's northern Uttar Pradesh state have flooded residential areas and affected hundreds of villages, leaving locals struggling to survive amidst the chaos. The rainy season usually draws to a close in North India around mid-September. However, this year the monsoons have extended beyond the usual spell. Swollen rivers in India's northern Uttar Pradesh state have flooded rural areas and affected at least 160 villages in the Gorakhpur district, leaving locals struggling to survive amidst the chaos. Heavy rains last week caused water levels in Saryu and Rapti rivers to rise, which have submerged houses, crops and roads and forced villagers to use boats to reach their destinations. In the village, there are about 160 villages now until the flood. There are 70 villages in the flood. The flood victims said, apart from humans, animals were also suffering because of the disaster. They were facing grave challenges in arranging fodder for their cattle. में इतनी दिक्कत होती है भैंस का चारा नहीं मिल पाता है जानवर खाने बिना मर जा रहे हैं और आने जाने के लिए कोई रास्ता नहीं है बहुत सारी परेशानियां मेरे गांव में लोग जगह जगह सांप आते हैं द रेनी सीजन यूजुअली ड्रॉस टू अ क्लोज इन नॉर्थ वेस्ट इंडिया अराउंड मिड सितंबर हाउएवर दिस ईयर द मॉनसून हैज एक्सटेंडेड बियॉन्ड द यूजुअल स्पेल व्हिच हैज बीन अ बेन स्पेशली फॉर द फार्मर्स हु से अनटाइमली रेन्स हैव डिलेड हार्वेस्ट एंड डैमेज्ड क्रॉप्स India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman on Thursday said that the 5G technology in India is completely indigenous and that most of the country will be able to avail it by 2024. She said India can now provide the 5G technology to other countries as well. India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Thursday said that the 5G technology in India is completely indigenous except for some critical parts imported from other countries like South Korea. During an interaction with students at the John Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, the minister asserted that India is ready to share the 5G technology with other countries as well. Sitaraman said the story of India's completely standalone 5G is yet to reach the public. Citing the private companies that launched 5G in limited cities, she said that most of the country will be able to avail the technology by 2024. The 5G that we've launched in our country is completely indigenous, standalone. There could be some critical parts coming from, say, countries like Korea, but certainly not coming from some them, somebody else. So completely indigenous technology that we can now provide 5G for countries which they want. Which... Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the 5G technology earlier this month at the India Mobile Congress 2022 in New Delhi. He pointed out that India was dependent on other countries for 2G, 3G and 4G technologies, but with 5G, India has created a new history. India is the world's second biggest wireless market with over a billion subscribers. The 5G data speeds in the country are expected to be about 10 times faster than those of 4G, with the network seen as vital for emerging technologies like self-driving cars and artificial intelligence. The forex reserves of Pakistan have taken another hit and dropped by a massive 302 million US dollars to reach 7.59 billion dollars, the lowest since July 2019.
Reports suggest with the current position, Pakistan has an import cover of only over a month. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves held by the State Bank of Pakistan, SBP, have continued to fall for the third week in a row, declining by 3.83%. According to a weekly report by SBP on October 7, the foreign currency reserves were recorded at 7,596.9 million US dollars, down by 303 million US dollars compared with 7,899.8 on September 30. The central bank cited external debt repayment, including interest payments on euro bonds and repayment of a commercial loan, as a major reason behind the decline. With the current foreign exchange reserves position, Pakistan has an import cover of fewer than 1.09 months. Meanwhile, Jihad Azur, a senior official of the International Monetary Fund IMF, said on Thursday that the global lender would be able to help Pakistan after it receives an assessment report from the World Bank and the UNDP regarding economic devastation as a result of unprecedented flooding in the country. He said they were saddened by the loss of human lives as well as livelihood in Pakistan caused by the floods. The deadly disaster has killed nearly 1,700 people and caused damages estimated at 30 billion US dollars. Hundreds of thousands of people displaced by the floods were still living in the open after the deluge destroyed their homes and livelihoods. More on news from Pakistan. Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah Khan has warned that the government will hang former Prime Minister Imran Khan upside down if he launches his opposition PTI party's long march in Islamabad. Khan has said he will bring thousands of supporters to the federal capital to demand snap elections and can announce the march at any time. The Pakistani government will hang former Prime Minister Imran Khan upside down if he launches his opposition PDI party's long march in capital Islamabad. Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah Khan has warned. Speaking during a GOTV news show, Sanaullah said Imran Khan doesn't know what the government is planning to do with him this time around. He warned that someone from the crowd could do anything triggering a response from the police. This comes as reports suggest the Economic Coordination Committee has approved an initial budget for over 410 million rupees to deal with the participants of the PDI's long march with an eye in hand, while the deployment of rangers in the federal capital has been extended for three months. Imran Khan earlier this week assigned PDI lawmakers and workers the task of bringing thousands of people east of the massive long march towards Islamabad, which in his words could be announced at any time. Khan, who was ousted as Prime Minister in April in a parliamentary vote, has demanded snap election, which the ruling coalition has rejected, saying voting will be held as scheduled later next year. Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba on Thursday sacked four ministers from the Janata Samajbadi Party, which left the ruling coalition last week and joined hands with opposition CPN UML for the polls in November. The recent economic wars and political stability are expected to be the priority for the voters in the election for the national parliament and seven state assemblies. Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba on Thursday sacked four ministers representing the Janta Samajwadi Party, JSP, which left the ruling coalition last week after joining hands with opposition CPN UML for the November 20 polls. Local media reports said that those relieved from the ministerial position include Minister for Federal Affairs and General Administration Rajendra Shreshta, Forest and Environment Minister Pradeep Yadav, Physical Infrastructure Minister Mohammad Istiak Rai and Agriculture and Livestock Minister Mrigendra Kumar Singh. Led by the centrist Nepali Congress Party and a group of former Maoist rebels, the five-party alliance which has been in government since July last year hopes to win voters' confidence in the general election for the 275-member parliament. Nepal, one of the poorest countries in Asia, wedged between China and India, is recovering steadily after two years of the coronavirus pandemic and surging energy prices this year. The recent economic woes and political stability are expected to be a priority for voters in the election for the national parliament and seven state assemblies of the Himalayan nation. 
The Indian Army on Friday paid tributes to Zoom, the assault dog who succumbed to gunshot wounds in the line of duty during anti-terror operations in India's Jammu and Kashmir this week. Zoom was part of a dog squad that has been trained to locate and take down terrorists. The Indian Army on Friday paid tributes to Zoom, the assault dog who laid down his life in the line of duty after sustaining serious injuries in an anti-terror operation in Anantnag in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory this week. A special event was also held in Zoom's honour in Jammu. Zoom, the two-year-old Belgian Malinios, breathed his last on Thursday at an army veterinary hospital where he was undergoing treatment after sustaining two gunshot injuries during the combat operation in Anantnag on October 9. Zoom was part of squad that has been trained to locate and take down terrorists. The army has many such assault dog squads deployed in its Kashmir units. Army officials said that Zoom had distinguished himself within the squad with his energy and courage and was an invaluable member of the team. They said despite being a two-year-old dog, Zoom was a veteran for having served in multiple counter operations. Excel or Zoom sabhi dogo mein se bahut hi behtar, jisko bolte behtarin dog the. और ये डॉग्स बहुत ही फुर्तीले जोशीले और बहादुर थे हमेशा हर काम के लिए ये लोग तैनात रहते हैं मास्टर के साथ कोई भी काम होता है अपने तरीके से वो पूरा करने का कोशिश करता है सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस लॉन्च अ कॉर्डन इन सच ऑपरेशन इन अनंतनाग लेट संडे नाइट अपॉन रिसीविंग इनपुट्स अबाउट द प्रेजेंस ऑफ टेररिस्ट देयर द टेररिस्ट वर हाइडिंग इनसाइड अ हाउस एंड Zoom वाज आस्क्ड टू क्लियर द हाउस Two terrorists were also gunned down in the gunfight that ensued while two soldiers also sustained injuries. Despite economic gloom elsewhere in the world, Indian consumers are lapping up everything from cars, houses, jewelry and television sets during the ongoing festive season, according to early data, giving a fillip to growth prospects. A report. Indian consumers are lapping up everything from cars, houses and television sets to travel and jewellery in the festive season that began last month, according to early data, giving a fillip to growth prospects despite economic gloom elsewhere in the world. Online and offline sales during the Hindu festival period starting in the last week of September and lasting until early November are estimated to cross 27 billion US dollars, almost the double the amount in the same pre-COVID period in 2019 and nearly 25% higher than last year, according to industry estimates. These sales would include nearly $15.2 billion offline sales compared to $8.5 billion in 2019, according to the Confederation of All India Traders. Retail sales always peak during October to November when the nation of 1.4 billion celebrates the major festivals of Dashehra and Diwali. It is also an auspicious time of year to get married, according to Hindu belief. लोग तो दिल से बाहर निकले हैं और ज्वेलरी का रेट्स भी गोल्ड का रेट अभी 50,000 के रेंज में है तो लोगों के मन में 50,000 का रेट एक लगभग बॉटम आ गया है कि इससे नीचे जाएगा तो इससे बाइंग अपॉर्चुनिटी तो 50 के आसपास रहने से लोगों में उत्साह है और फेस्टिवल में हमारे कल्चर में ही सोना है तो लोग फेस्टिवल में दशहरा में दिवाली में खरीदारी करते हैं द इंडस्ट्री लीडर्स से द सर्च दिस ईयर इज मच लार्जर mainly due to pent-up demand as COVID-19 recedes after two years of devastating the country, as well as a rise in wages and an increase in jobs as the economy recovers. The tourism industry is also gradually recovering as the pandemic almost subsides. In the past two years, we were all uh, isolated, secluded. We lived inside our homes, home locked. So it really feels very good to come here. And also the business also like uh, many people they were very affected and uh, now everything is hopefully okay. The boom in India comes despite economic challenges elsewhere in the world with broadening inflation in the aftermath of the Russia-Ukraine war and sharply higher interest rates. Countries representing one-third of global output are expected to be in recession next year, the IMF has said. In India too, lending rates have gone up by about 150 basis points since May as the central bank acted to combat consumer inflation which hit a five-month high of 7.41% year-on-year in September. But economists said the sense in India was that inflation has peaked while economic activity was picking up. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.